This indeed is a joyous day. It's probably the high point of the Lenten season. It's a day of rejoicing. So we know that there's a lessening of the Lenten fast for today and tomorrow, which is the synaxis, focused on the Archangel Gabriel who gave the announcement to Mary. It is a day that we enjoy ourselves. The color is blue for the occasion. We celebrate uh, the work of the Virgin Mary. Very, very important. It's a feast of salvation history. And we know that we have that theme all during Lent of creation, the fall, and redemption. When humanity separated themselves from God, they brought death and slavery into their existence. And God gradually works hand in hand with a people who have turned away from him, preparing them for the coming of the Messiah. So when we talk about salvation, the absolute top of that chapter is with the Virgin Mary. She's the height of humanity. She's the one who gives us an example of how to live. So we know the story uh, focuses on a young woman who is about 13, 14, 15 years old. She's been raised in the temple. She's been dedicated to service for God. She doesn't quite understand the reasons behind it, and she knows that she has a visitation by the Archangel Gabriel who tells her that she will be mother of the Lord, that she will indeed bear the Messiah. Now, this is absolutely stunning in conversion. She's a young woman. She's a virgin. How can she become a mother? How can she bear a child? And, of course, the Archangel tells her the Holy Spirit will come upon her and the child in her womb will be both be human. His humanity comes from the Virgin Mary. That's our offering to God, which we talk about on the Feast of the Nativity or Christmas. His divinity comes, of course, from the Father through the Holy Spirit. But something which is very important that we all have to hear is we were created with free will. We know that we use our free will usually rather badly, and we don't do what we're supposed to. The Virgin Mary gives the most profound example of the use of free will. When she's approached by the Archangel Gabriel and she's told that she'll be the mother of the Lord, she could have said no. She could have used her free will wrongly and said no, but what she said basically was, be it done unto me as is the will of God. She says yes. That yes is vitally important because it brings about the process of preparing an end to that enslavement, end of that imprisonment, end of death under which humanity is held possible. It allows the Savior to enter and work out our salvation. That young woman, really a child, says yes and exercises her free will properly. She submits to the will of God, and what we are called to do is also to determine the will of God for our lives, accept it, and follow it. She indeed becomes Theotokos, the God-bearer. She's also Theophorus, one who bears God, and we're called to be God-bearers too in that way. Uh, we indeed celebrate the uh, Virgin Mary. We celebrate this gift of freedom which comes today. And of course, we know that this tied in with, this is what, the 201st anniversary of the beginning of the Greek Revolution that began on the Feast of the Annunciation. Uh, the very sort of curtain for the altars were the blue and white with the cross. Uh, Archbishop Germanos of Patras gave that to the people who were leading the revolt. And we know that we have this emphasis on freedom. Freedom did not come easy. Freedom after 400 years of Turkokratia, or Turkish rule in Greece, and also the entire Balkan Peninsula, but it comes to an end with the beginning of that Declaration of Independence, that uprising which occurs on the Feast of the Annunciation. So we remember freedom which is given to humanity through the yes of the Virgin Mary. We also remember what happens in Greece historically on this occasion too, and we celebrate both. Uh, the Independence Day comes from the Annunciation, not vice versa. Please come forward and receive the Antiteron. Oh, and there it is, yes. Yeah. 